Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. We are, we're back. Eugenia's bedroom. I don't know how it happened, but here we are again. Um, thanks for everybody who continues to wish me happy health and feel better and everything in terms of the COVID and everything. Honestly, I haven't even been really that bad with it. I started taking some uh, pill called Paxlovid. Oh my gosh, it was like night and day. I mean, not that I was ever that bad at first, but I took this thing. I'm on day five of it or whatever. Little to no symptoms. I don't know if it's like the wonder pill or whatever, but it kind of seems like to be like the antibiotic Pfizer created to combat COVID or whatever. I don't know. It, it really worked well for me. And I don't know, I'm just kind of, I'm doing well. But yeah, thanks for everybody who has been reaching out. That's really sweet of you. Um, okay, so last time that we were covering Miss Eugenia, we were talking mostly about what she had been saying on the YouTube shorts recently. I wanted to take a look at some of the feedback that you guys gave me in that last video, kind of talk about that a little bit, and then move into what I want to discuss today. So um, first things first, in a lot of those clips and everything, and just Eugenia's presence in general, I'm kind of getting the vibe that a lot of you feel gaslit by her. Um, her content comes across in such a way where she knows what she's doing. She's owning it unapologetically, just going for it. No, no qualms about it. No, nothing. This is what I'm doing. This is what I want. This is what I'm putting out onto the internet. And I don't care what you think. Um, a lot of you are kind of getting that way. I don't think that anybody is really buying the whole mm, not informed, misinformed thing anymore. Um, she's not really ignorant of it. You know, it would be one thing if she was misinformed or misled or ignorant, but a lot of you seem to be in agreement that she's very informed and, uh, not ignorant at all, knows exactly what's going on and is continuing to do it all deliberately. Um, you know, the other side of that conversation is the whole part of the mental side of this and everything. So there are some people that are, you know, are gun ho. It's like, oh, she knows what she's doing. Oh, she knows blah, blah, blah. The problem we're encountering right here is why she does act, say, do, and think the way she does about life. So, I suppose that would sort of come down to, well, I mean, who are we looking at here? Are we looking at her? Or are we looking at her with this component attached to her? So, I suppose maybe that is where a portion of the audience does attribute sympathy and understanding to all of this. I know I do. So, um, but... Uh, in terms of it just being like totally egregious, totally like destructive, totally going out of her way to be as harmful to the internet as possible. I don't know if I necessarily see it like that. I know that there are a lot of strong opinions on this. A lot of people, you know, we talked about last episode about like, oh, you know, people don't need to be seeing this. People don't need. But I also did see in the comments of the last video that just because there's something on the internet we don't like. And I feel like this is kind of what needs to be said in 2023. I mean, you know, history can repeat itself. I mean, think about how many times throughout history, a group of people or even a majority of people just didn't like something. So they decided to eradicate it. Which, I mean, if we look at a historical context of that and like dealing with other people, getting rid of something may get rid of it, but it doesn't get rid of it entirely it doesn't get rid of a you're not addressing the problem you know you're solving today's problem this generation might not have to deal with it but you know what what about another internet influencer that pops up 10 20 years from now I, I mean so i feel like we have to get to a point on the internet it's like we're just because we don't like something I don't necessarily know that the best course of action is to just eradicate it from the internet. Well, I don't want to, I don't like it. So I don't want to look at it. I don't like this. I don't want to talk about it. I don't, we need to talk about it. We need to look at it. That's how you make things go away. That's how you address things. 
not just shoving it under the rug and not thinking about it. So I guess maybe that would be the side of the topic that I would maybe encourage some people out there that are on that side of the fence thinking, oh, just get this off of here. Just get, well, if you just get it off of here, if you just don't talk about it, if you just ignore it, if you just, you know, are, are, are we really progressing here? Are we really learning anything? So, um, Jeffree Star is a gay man. <laughs> that was a very hot topic from uh, the episode from the other day. I wasn't sure if Jeffrey was trans, so I don't know. But you all let me know. He's a gay man. He just likes to wear a lot of makeup and wigs. Um, so today, what we're going to move into now is this is the short that I didn't get to or missed in the last one. I went back and looked through the series of shorts that we went through in the last episode and it wasn't the full video. It was just a short of Eugenia going like this and then the video ended. I, I noticed some people in the comments below said like, oh, you missed the one where she went to the moon. But that short was like a very small portion of the video that we're about to watch. So the video though, that we're about to watch today is from the other day where she was dressed up like sailor Jupiter. Someone let me know that like, I'm, I'm learning a whole lot, you know, geez, Jeffrey's gay. Um, this is say, this is a sailor Jupiter outfit. Um, so this was from the other night when, Apparently, Eugenia was being told to go look at the super moon. You know, I, I, I swear, like every year, every single year, uh, an article is posted online. It's like, the moon is going to be big and blue, and this won't happen again until 2048. Um, the moon this year is going to be large and red, and this won't happen again for 40 years. The moon is the closest it's ever been to the earth, and this won't happen again for a hundred years. Like every single year you see some type of article about the moon doing something unique and quirky and that it won't happen again for another 50 years. You see that every, <laughs> so one of those things happened like last week or something like the moon was big. Okay, the, the moon was big. That, that's what I'm taking away from it. And a lot of people in Eugenia's chat at the time, I think this was on TikTok, were telling her, hey, girl, hey, girl, go look at the moon if you've seen the moon. So we're going to see where this goes. And apparently it starts an issue. And then we're going to talk about that issue and what that means for what might be going on behind the scenes, what the household dynamic might be. And most importantly, what Deb's role is in the house. So, all right. This title is uh, Eugenia Cooney tries to go outside and see the moon. So let's see what goes on. But yeah, guys, it's like, of course I feel bad. <laughs> it won't be like this again. Wait, it is 2023. What do you mean until 2023? Cause it's 2023 right now. Look at the moon from the window. I doubt I'm gonna be able to see it much from there. I don't know. Like, I can check. Oh my gosh, Darren with the classic breakfast! Darren! Darren. I know nothing about TikTok. What is a classic breakfast? Like how on YouTube you would say like, oh, thank you for the super chat. Or on Twitch you would say, thank you for the bits. On TikTok, thank you for the classic breakfast. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I just noticed like, why? Why? Why is there a... Thank you so much. I feel bad if I like disturb her. Like if I wake her up if she's sleeping, I'll, I'll like I'd feel bad. Ella, thank you so much for the follow, Ella. Ella, thank you. That's like the one thing is I would feel bad. Can you go outside by yourself? Yeah, but I have to go into a room where she'd be sleeping in. Amy, thank you for the follow. You guys, listen, I'm sorry if it's weird. I'm sorry if you guys are like 
But I'm just trying to be considerate. I'm gonna put my skeleton away, by the way. <laughs> just so I have a little bit more room on my couch. It's like... Just, just casually the skeleton hang out with her, like as if it's one of the stuffed animals. I, I, anyway. Uh, so Okay, so she doesn't want to go outside to see the moon because she would have to go past Deb and that would potentially wake her up and she would feel bad about disturbing her mother's sleep in order to go see the moon. Is that the real reason? Is that the real reason she would feel bad about waking the mom up? Or should she not be going out to see the mood at night because the mom and her have come to an understanding in the past that she isn't to go out at night like that? Yeah. So is she afraid of getting caught or is she afraid of disturbing the mom's sleep? I know. I'm sorry. Like, it's like, you gotta go, like, you should just go outside. But the thing is, she sleeps, like, most of the time, like, downstairs, just, like, on a couch. And it's like, if I wake her up, I'm gonna feel really bad if I disturb her. Like, she hasn't been texting back, so it's like... I just feel kind of bad. That's the thing. But I'm telling you guys, I do feel kind of bad here, honestly. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a beautiful moon. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong here. I'm sure it is gorgeous. But it's like, you wouldn't. Yeah, no, I don't know if I should. Like I said, I do feel kind of bad. Like if I'm disturbing anybody, it, it, is it going to be is, is, like this? I can tell she wants to a little bit, but she's apprehensive. She's afraid of, like, making the mom mad. Mm. This moon better not be a joke, guys. Like, if I'm gonna go, like, try to go outside, like, I hope. But... You know what another thing is? I think that Eugenia is afraid of disappointing her audience. Because if there are, I, I mean, I can't see the active chat replay from whatever platform she was streaming this on, but I can imagine there were a lot of people in the chat egging her on saying, oh, yeah, 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 go outside, go look at the moon. Oh, my God, you have to. The, you, you can only see it this day for the next, you know, this won't happen again for 40 years. You have to, Eugenia. So maybe in her mind, remember, Eugenia's all about nice. Always wants to be polite, always wants to give people what they want. Everybody's nice, everybody's cute, everybody's kind, everybody's pretty, everybody's, you know. So if she were to not fulfill this request for the horde of people in her chat right now telling her to go look at the moon, maybe she to herself is thinking, well, that's mean of me to not fulfill this request that my audience is asking of me. I don't want to ignore all of these people and come across as mean. Because that's like Eugenia's main thing. She never, ever, ever, ever wants to come across as anyone that is not sweet. So maybe she feels a little bit obligated right now because the audience is kind of pushing it at her. And we have seen the audience in the past kind of get the best of her. And they can... <sighs> I don't know if the way they say it or if it's like strength and numbers or something, but we've seen in the past that that chat can get control over her. I mean, we saw what happened with the diaper thing. I mean, it basically brought her to the brink of tears. So I think if that can happen, I also think that the same chat or the same ideology, the same people could realistically get her to walk outside of the front of her house. That you guys are not messing around. K with the pug! Oh my gosh, K, thank you! Let me just make sure she's still not gonna text back, cause like, then I just wouldn't feel as bad. It's like, if she was awake, it's like, at least I wouldn't be going and like, disturbing people. But, sadly, it seems like she's like, not. Um, <laughs> I'm literally so scared. It's not really that I'm scared, it's just that like, I feel bad waking someone up that's sleeping if they're sleeping. Mm. Again, so either this is about, again, Eugenia never wants to come across as mean or anything adverse. 
So maybe she's thinking to herself, well, if I wake my mom up, then I will come across as disrespectful, inconsiderate, and mean to her. But on the other side of it, it's like, well, if I don't do what these people are telling me to do in my chat right now, then I'll come across as mean to them. So maybe she's kind of like pick the lesser of two evils right now. It's like, well, you know, maybe I could wake up, take the risk of waking up my mom if it'll make my Twitch chat happy. But again, I mean, the other side to this is like, is this all just a farce? Like, is this all just fantasy? Is Eugenia like not allowed out at night? Is she not allowed out? Is she not allowed to walk past the mom without permission? Is she... Is she afraid to wake up? You know how like in movies and stuff, like there'll be like prisoners and then like the, the sleeping dog, it'll be like a big guard dog and it'll have the keys around its neck and then the prisoners try to be very subtle and quiet about it and try to get the keys off of the hound's neck to let them out and then they can escape. Like, <laughs> like the, the, that concept, but it's Deb Cooney and it's the front door on TikTok. <laughs> Sure, thank you. All right, guys. Well, it does not seem like okay. Go see the moon. I will. I will. <sighs> I hope you guys aren't kidding about how amazing this moon is because I do feel kind of bad. I'm disturbing my mom at all. Eugene, thank you for the share. Thank you, Scraps, for the follow. All right, you guys. We're gonna try to be quiet. The lights are off. It's just a normal moon. No, everyone's saying it's a cool moon. All right, guys, here we go. I'm trying to be quiet. Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe, like, what is she wearing? Is she wearing those giant platform boots again? I mean, I, I don't know about you, but if I was trying to sneak out at night and not wake someone up, I wouldn't be wearing nine-inch stiletto heels or the, the those giant black boots that she likes to wear. So I hear the bugs outside, so that has to be a front door or a side door or something. Why did that door jingle? You know? I, I guess maybe it very well could just be a decoration that they have in the house, but the part of me that's screaming at my subconscious right now to say not, don't be naive is what if this is something that Deb thinks about. What if she tries to get out at night? What if she tries to take the car? What if she tries to do something? If I can put dangly things on the door that'll make noise, if she tries to open it, it'll wake me up and alert me. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, she's awake. I woke her up. Hey, mom. Did you hear about the moon? Is it that? Everyone's telling me I need to go see it. Oh, okay. All right, let's look through. The, we're just going to look through the window, guys. Is it that amazing? I mean, you, you couldn't really make out what she said, but her response of, oh, okay, tells me whatever Deb shouted in the background was, get, like, get back in here. Don't be going outside. You can see it from the window. You don't need to be going outside, Eugenia. You can see the moon from the window. Come over here by the window. Oh, my. And I don't know. 
you, you notice how a re like when she first saw it, when she first got caught and said, Mom, did you hear about the moon? It was like she was trying to justify her actions to her real quick. It's like, oh, I'm not trying to sneak out. I'm trying to go see the moon. You know, I, I'm not I'm not doing anything wrong. I just wanted to go see the moon. Did you hear about the moon? Everybody's talking about the moon. If anything, this is the moon's fault, not my fault. I'm trying to make a cover for it, I guess. And I know that's just the way that I took it. Let's look through. We're just gonna look through the window, guys. Is it that amazing? Everyone's like was begging me to see it. Sorry, I woke you up. Hmm. Sorry, I woke you up. I mean, I mean, it probably had to do with the giant boots and the jangle thing on the door. Because she, she could have done that, I guess. And I mean, if you're just going to look out a window, I mean, really, there's no... This house is huge. There's no windows upstairs that you could have looked out of out upstairs to see the moon up there. You had to go out this door right here. And I, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. And th this this clip's strange. Everything about this is strange. Um, before we move on, I did want to take a look at one more thing, though. Um, there was a comment under this video that stuck out to me where someone said, at the house that they own or owned in California, there was some footage in Shane's documentary where Eugenia was having trouble understanding the locks and didn't really know how to open the doors to her own house at the California one. So I just want to take a look at that little excerpt of the documentary. We're going to do the whole documentary soon, TM. <laughs> but I want to look at what exactly happened in this, because if there's something that went on in that documentary where Eugenia doesn't even know how to open up the doors in her own house, that's a little bit concerning. So let's move on over to that. People, I think. Oh, wait, let's go. Yeah. Patio. This was actually um, the lock for it, I guess, but it's off though. Yeah, that was another thing that like, <laughs> was weird. It's very heavy. Oh. Yeah, there was a. Oh my god. There was just, like walks one day, and I don't even know, like, I don't know what happened in this house before all of that, but. <laughs> Well, and the neighbors get telling us they're like, oh, like, watch out, because, like, they have black cars. <laughs> it's really weird. Nothing has happened now. Now everything seems like it's good. But... <laughs> so, all right. Is there any more walks? Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, what? Oh, here's another. Oh, one more down there. <laughs> they really protect this house. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Well, this could have been a lot of things. California is dangerous. Um, but she was kind of bewildered by all of that. I, I mean, the giant, really, what, what, what was strange to me was the giant black bar. I mean, like the giant. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the still of it, but this, the giant black bar, this, I mean, really, anytime you want to go out into your back patio, I mean, you have to, I, I don't know, like, this is something you would see in a prison or if like someone was being chased by a killer and you had to like barricade the door, like this is something. You, so it, it's peculiar. It's unusual. Um, I, I guess if I were to talk on the other side of things though, she is a public figure. Uh, she is an affluent public figure living in California. Uh, and I mean, I, I don't know if the, the dad and the brother are living there, but I, I don't know. Two, two affluent women living in California alone. Uh, so, I mean, does this necessarily play into the whole discussion we've had with the whole moon, like not being able to leave the house? But... I suppose the one thing that was strange to me other than that black bar was just she didn't even know like how to really open the door. He had to open it for her. It's like, oh, well, 
uh, I don't know. Is there another lock? Is is there a third? Is there a fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, fifteenth lock? I, I'm not sure, Shane. Can you open this door for me? So that kind of communicates to me that Eugenia really isn't leaving too much. Or if she does leave, maybe the mom is the one that lets her out. But again, I mean, this could be one of three exits. So maybe she just never leaves out of this door. Mm, I don't really think that there's too much of an argument to be made for this. Is it strange? Yeah. Could it, could it have a very normal rationalization explanation to it? It could. Yeah. So... I don't know. I don't think that this was as strange as what happened with the moon. But, all right, let's move on to some other shorts now. Um, we're going to go back to, I think, the Love Eugenia Cooney channel and uh, see what else is up. Oh, okay, first up, looks like Miss Eugenia is in Disney. I didn't know that. I'd imagine Disneyland, because they, if they have the house in California, that would make more sense than if they were in Florida. But, okay, she's in Disney. I'm finally at Magic Kingdom! Yay, it's actually so cool right now. Cause there's like, there's all like Halloween stuff, like like pumpkins and just like cool Halloween stuff. Let me see. Okay, yay, I could flip it. Look how cool! Oh my gosh, it's like Mickey pumpkins. So yeah, guys, um, <laughs> kind of took me a while to get here, but I'm here. Probably gonna be here a while. I love Disney for like Halloween time. Yeah, look at all the buildings. Um, yeah, my family was like kind of tired earlier, so they were kind of like, are we still going to magic? But <laughs> we're here now, so yay! Uh, okay. Well, if you've ever been to Disney or really any theme park, you know it's a lot of walking. And something that gets brought up a lot in these vlogs when uh, she does a lot of walking or go, you know, state fair, for example, one of the first videos I did when she was in the state fair, uh, one of the glaringly uh, mind boggling things that came up to me and a lot of other people in the comments was, where does the stamina come from? Where does the energy come from? Where does the, I, I, so, cause I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've never been in the position to be able to empathize with how someone in that state would feel. But you would just think, like, wouldn't you be tired? Wouldn't you be not really in the best spirits to be walking around such a large place such as Disneyland? Um, and, you know, honestly, this exact question was asked by Shane in his little hour-long documentary that he did with her. Um Basically, along the lines was like, girl, I mean, how did she have the energy? I mean, like, were you like, what what was going on? How did how was that possible was basically what he asked. And Eugenia kind of gave a response that she gave a response to a lot of his questions with um, that can happen. Honestly, Eugenia talks like a lawyer. She does, in a lot of sense, talk like a lawyer. She'll never really give you a straight answer. It's kind of like a very gray area, kind of like, well, it could be this, but it also could be this. It, a lot of her answers were answered in that specific way, which if you're having a conversation with someone, that is kind of annoying because you want the answer. You don't want to, you know, be talk to like that it's like okay well you're not really answering my question <laughs> but she basically said you know what I, 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 that can happen to other people um it didn't happen to me though uh you know a lot of people are lethargic a lot of people are tired a lot of the time uh but that didn't happen to me it didn't happen to me so maybe i'm one of the lucky ones I think that she said that actually. I think that 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 line did come out of her mouth in the documentary. I'm not a hundred. I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I think that she did say something along the lines of like, "I, I was one of the lucky ones. That didn't happen to me." Um, because a lot in that documentary, Shane would talk about, well, you know, this is characteristic of something that generally happens to someone in your situation, and then Eugenia's response to that was, "Well, that didn't happen to me." So 
that kind of leads me to believe, does she think that she's the the snowflake of all of this? Does she think that she's immune to the harmful effects of a lifestyle? Does she think that she's the special one, the one that this won't affect, the one that she's not touchable? Eh. You guys didn't know? I'm in Disney this week! Yay! Um, so yeah, sorry that I haven't really been posting that much from here or like doing lives and stuff. Um, I still have my family here too and some of them just like don't always want me to be filming or you know, I would never want to like be disrespectful or make anyone mad so yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll try to like post and do stuff when I can. Um, and I think today we're gonna like go see- AKA the dad. The dad doesn't want her filming. Doesn't want her. And you know, something that I missed in the last video that we did, do you remember when Eugenie was walking downstairs and she said, hey, hey dad, I'm on TikTok. Do you want to say hi right now? And then his response was, uh, sure. And then Eugenie said, oh, oh, like really, really? Like legit, you actually want to come say hi? I noticed in that, I, I watched it over a couple times over again. In the audio of that, Deb intervenes. I didn't catch it at first, but Deb intervened and went, no, 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 uh, no. So I think that if it's just Eugenia and Deb, the filming is okay. But for some reason, Whenever the dad and the brother, or maybe just the dad, or maybe just the brother, are involved, you know, if it's just the three of them, or just the four of them, things get modified with the filming. Eugenia isn't just allowed to have her cell phone and her camcorder, camcorder and go wild. She isn't just allowed to do whatever she wants. It seems like there seems to be some type of, like, rules set into place. Like, she can't just do whatever she would like to do. So, that was interesting the Disney horses like there's a section where you can not that far from like where I'm staying and then I think I'm going to Magic Kingdom so yeah I'm just like trying to find the boat it's like kind of big here and I think I keep going the wrong way but hopefully I figure it out eventually <laughs> the boat rides oh okay you know what I think that she did this in one of her vlogs because I think that she and she and Deb took a ferry very similar to this, to this little, like, random campground-looking thing, and then they went out and got and pet the horses, and Deb told the horses that she loved them, and... <laughs> okay, I don't know if this is the same ferry, though. You guys with the burger emojis. Oh my gosh, you guys. I don't know. You guys just... What can I say? You guys really love your burgers, huh? You guys are just like always like, all right, Eugenia, it is burger time. So, um, yeah. Where's the blush farm guy? <laughs> I think that there's some things that you say to Eugenia on TikTok like this that just completely graze right past or don't even really register with anymore. I think that she just remains completely unfazed. I think that saying something like the burger stuff, you know, like, oh, your cheeseburger, like whatever. I think at this point, Eugenia has been on the internet for so long that just coming on here, getting in one of her live chats, typing out the word burger or sending in a bunch of cheeseburger emojis to her. I don't really think that that does anything. I your room is so cute. Thank you so much. I like to just kind of have like a lot of, I guess, like cute things around my room, guys. So uh, my Christmas tree, I kind of like fell into the other day. It was actually a lot cooler before. I had like a jack, like tree topper. That was so cool. But it's cool. It's, it, I know I might, I might be crazy having a Christmas tree right now, but... Uh, she fell into it. Well, I mean, I don't know if she has issues with her balance, but I can imagine walking around her house in these giant platform boots or the heels or whatever that she likes to wear all the time. That probably isn't the best. So, I mean, walking around on this, <laughs> falling into the Christmas tree, probably. 
The thing is, it's like Jack Skellington. And I, I mean, I love Jack and Nightmare all year. So that's why it's kind of hard to take down. Then I just kind of have my love sack here, which is actually like really comfortable. I have a computer set up over there. I have my Jinx chair, my League of Legends Jinx chair. TV here. I have a lot of makeup and plushies and just like cute things. I do sleep on my couch, yeah. Your room is so cute. Thank you so much. I like to just. Mm. Yeah, odd, I guess. Um, that was something that she talked about with the other guy the other day where she said, yeah, I sleep on my couch. He's like, oh, wow, that that's that's interesting. Wow, that that does surprise me that you sleep on a couch. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily anything to look into about that. I know some people that sleep on their couch. So there we go. Where's my diaper? Oh, I don't wear one. Sorry to let you down. You guys just love to come in here and ask me that. But I don't I haven't worn one since I was like literally like a baby. Hate to tell you, sorry. We've seen it, then you're delusional. You guys like to call me delusional, but I mean <laughs> the thing is, whatever you think you see, and I don't know. Oh my gosh, I'm actually surprised she said it that way, because she she doesn't ever want to come across as mean. So the fact that she just called someone that even though they're being mean to her, she said, you're delusional back to them. I mean, I don't know, that's kind of like going against her nature in a way. So I don't know what it is. I really don't know what exactly it is has happened in the past uh, about this as to why when people say this, this strikes such a nerve. But it's it's obvious. It's obvious in the way that she responds to her audience when she talks about the diaper, why it's so bothersome to her. I, there is a difference between someone coming in and saying, your makeup is bad today. Your hair is ugly. Um, or sending like cheeseburger emojis in the chat. Big difference in the way that she sees that versus when someone comes in and starts talking about the diaper. I, I don't know why that seems to be her kryptonite or whatever, but she still seems to be... Because, you know, I mean, this is kind of like... Reverse psychology 101, you know, the more you, uh, you know, the more you let people know that something bothers you, the more they're going to push that button. But I don't even know if, what are we, like a over a year out from Diapergate happening, like a year and a half ago from that happening, Eugenia still kind of has the same response to it. I mean, it's not as bad as it was the first day, but she's still a little bit stern about it. She still gets a little bit emotional about it. Whereas where you say something else, hair, makeup, clothes, uh, just, you know, personality, whatever, you know, that's water off a duck, water off a duck's back for her. But this, there's something about it. What you could have possibly seen, because I know what I'm wearing. I know there's no diaper on. So whatever you think you saw, it was not a diaper. Sorry. She said not today, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to sound mean, but it's so annoying. I'm just kind of like, guys, like I don't wear diapers. So there we go. Okay, I don't feel like I'm balding, but it's like, you guys tell me, some of you guys in chat, no offense, but you guys, you guys tell me that I'm balding. But then you also tell me that I'm lying about wearing extensions when th these are extensions, the rest is real. I'm gaslighting by telling everyone I'm not dying. Well, we're all technically dying. Kinda. But I'm not dying right now. Um, you know? Why do we have to be so negative, guys? You know? This is what I mean when I talk about talking about, talking like a lawyer. Talking on the fence, a lot of gray communication, not really any one way. Well, if you're going to say this, then you also mean this. And if you also say this, that means you imply this. Blah, blah, blah. Like, not really getting to the point, not really saying anything. And she loves to do that thing where, 
well, you know, you guys like to come in here and say this about me, but I also have other people that come in here and say the exact opposite. So I don't really know what to think. She loves using that as an excuse. I honestly don't feel like I'm twitching. It's like, I feel like guys, like I don't need to be mean, but some of the things that some of you guys get mad at me for are like saying, stop lying. I feel like it's so weird. It's like, you're mad at me for like believing that I'm not twitching. I'm delusional. Okay. A lot of people say that. Uh, I mean, I think that even if you really thought I- A lot of people say that, but I'm not. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have said that across years of me being a public figure on the internet, but I'm right. I know what's best. I know the answer to this. Not, not the hundreds of thousands of people that have been saying that. Every, a million people are wrong. I am the one that's right. <laughs> and I mean, that kind of goes along the line of thought with the whole thing that I was talking about earlier, where, oh yeah, someone with my condition, that can happen to them, but it didn't happen to me, you know? So, you know, something that affects your teeth, yeah, that most definitely can be a side effect. Did that happen to me? No, it did not. Like, I, I, I don't know. Do, do we have this thought of invincibility looming in the back of our head that we are always right. It's never going to affect us. Everyone who says anything about this, it's just a hater that they don't know what they're talking about. It, I, I don't know. Cause I, I mean, really how else would you cope against cope, cope and fabricate all of this stuff that people say to you? for years on end like this. It's just none of it registers everything. You would really have to get to a point where you convince yourself where you're just so, you just know so much better. I, I don't know. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like as I'm saying this and as I'm trying to make sense of it right here, I also have to bring myself back down to earth and think, Jord, this, is a dis so you can see my diaper oh well that's really funny guys Ooh, thank you for the flowers uh thank you baby girl okay well that's really funny because like i don't i don't wear a diaper see that kind of response now, I, I don't know. Let's let's take this back to second grade. You're on the playground at recess. Um, somebody calls you a booger face. Someone calls you, says you have cooties. If your response to that is, I'm not a booger face or no, I don't. I don't have cute cooties or whatever. I mean, what does that invite the assailant to do next? They push a little bit harder. And then if you push back a little bit by saying, no, I don't, I'm not that, stop it. Like, you see how that kind of argument goes? I mean, really, first grade on the playground. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Starts crying, freaks out. So it's kind of peculiar to me that we are over a year and a half out from when this originally happened, that Eugenia still kind of has this same response to the diaper thing. And you know why people are continuing to say this. If she didn't give this kind of response to these people that are saying this, people would not people would have stopped doing this over a year ago. But they're continuing to get a little bit of a rise out of her. It's, it's nowhere to where it, it was in the past, but you can tell she gets a little bit stern. She gets a little bit bothered. And for trolls on the internet, for people who seek rises out of people on the internet, they're very good at discerning between what does and what does not bother someone. In this video right here, I can tell, it might not be 
very big, but there is a portion of her that is a little bit bothered by this. Because if she wasn't bothered by this, her response wouldn't be, no, I don't. I don't wear a diaper. Because, again, that takes that takes me back to elementary school playground. You know, someone responds by t- like that, it tells me they're bothered. And when you find out someone's bothered, when you find someone's weak spot and you want to com- continue to exploit it or twist a knife or pour salt in the wound, you push, you push, you push until they fall down. At all. I actually haven't since I was like a baby. So, yeah, that, that's kind of impossible. I don't think you actually see anything, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, with some of you guys. Jeez. What palette am I using for today's look? Let me show you guys. Oh no, it's not COVID. I- thank you so much for the follow. Also, if you guys have it, big thank you to everybody because we have over 3,000 likes right now. So big thank you to, oh sorry, 3,000 shares. We have like 1.2 million likes. So big thank you to everyone double tapping and liking. If you guys could double tap to like, I always really appreciate it. And also if you guys want to share the stream, we have over 3,000 shares. So thank you everyone sharing right now. Andy with the hand hearts. Thank you, Andy. Will I ever be normal again? I don't think so. Being normal sounds really boring to me, guys. Like what is normal? Why would I want to be like everybody else? That sounds boring. Thank you so much for the fall. Oh. Oh my. Mm. All right. I actually think that's where we might end it today. Um, I, I see what y'all mean. Like how I, how I said at the beginning of the episode, a lot of you feel gaslit. A lot of you feel like this is blatant ownership. This is brazen. Brazen in your face. I don't care. I never cared. I'm never going to care. This is throwing it in your face. It's not subtle. It's not subtle at all. Okay. All right. Well, I'm thinking maybe next video we'll finish out the rest of August. And then, um, I don't know. Soon, TM. We will hit up the Shane documentary, see what that's all about. Um, it's a very long documentary. Um, there's definitely a lot to say about it. And y'all know me, I can talk. <laughs> so I don't know if I would do it all in one, maybe parts, like part one, part two, part three, or just part one and part two. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it will get covered soon, TM. Um, Thanks for hanging out. Let me know what y'all think. Any feedback, any comments, concerns, anything you'd like, disliked about this video, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks. See ya.